Hi all of you, welcome back to yet another project video. In this project, you're going to create liquidity marketplace where you will allow user to come and create liquidity of two token. And not only that, you can also sell your own ERC20 token. You will have an ICO where user can come and buy your native token. So let me give you a quick walkthrough that what exactly you're going to build in this application and what are the features and functionality we have included. So this is how our application would look like. Very first section we have is the navigation. This is the hero section. This is the feature section where we are promoting some of the cryptocurrency. You can simply scroll and here we have the liquidity list section. Here you will find the list of all the liquidity which you will create using this particular platform. So the name of the two token, Rapmati, the blockchain coder, the address of the two token, the pool address, and when you have created this liquidity, you can also verify this transaction on Polyscan. So click here and here you will find all the details about the liquidity and the amount you have spent for creating the liquidity. That's all going to reflect here. Here we have the static component. Here we have the static component. Here we have the static component and here we have the ICO component. From here, user can simply buy your native token. Polygon Mumbai, all the contract is deployed on Polygon Mumbai and this particular token has total supply of this and currently i am the owner of the contract so i hold this much fund right now i listed the 200000 token for ico and each token costs 001 mati when the user will purchase so i have already bought 10 token from my different account that's why you can see it's 10 and you can able to find the market cap value so here user can simply give the number of token they want to purchase and they can simply click on this buy and we're going to charge Meti for that. And here we have the footer. So before you create liquidity, the very first thing you have to do is you have to check the pool exists or not, because if the pool doesn't exist, you cannot able to create liquidity. So we have this option called add pool. Here you have to provide the address of the two token and the fee, and this will return the address of the pool which we're going to utilize internally to create more liquidity. Let me check the pool which I have already created on Polygon Mumbai between Rapmati and the blockchain coder, which you can see right here in the list. I'm going to use the exact pool. So first thing we have to do is to add the address. I'll paste the Rapmati and wait. It's going to fetch out the information about this particular token. So Rapmati, you can see the symbol, you can see the font I have available. And the next token is the blockchain coder. If I paste here, it's going to fetch out the information and give me all this information. So I can see that I have fun in both of these tokens. Now I have to provide the fee ratio. So I'll go with this 3000. I will click on this check pool and it's going to fetch out this information. So this particular pool exists, which means I can utilize this existing pool to create new liquidity. So once you're done with that, simply you can copy and you can verify that or you can simply close it. Now comes the second part. So we have checked the pool already exists and now you have to click on this add liquidity. And here you have to provide the information to create liquidity. So right now, just now we have searched for the pool between the two tokens and that's information you will find here. So I have already done this research previously. You can see the list. So no matter how many tokens you do the research, that's all going to reflect here. Okay, so whatever liquidity, the pool address you will search, if it exists, then it's going to add in your system and that's going to reflect here. And you can simply select because this pool is very important and we need this information. So I'm going to go with this one because both the pools are same. And here I have to provide the amount which I'm willing to spend for creating the liquidity. So I'll go with something less like 001. This much fund I have to spend because I don't have fund enough fund in my wallet. I have this much and this is sufficient. And here you have to provide the information that how many token you want to approve. I already have enough TBC token which I have to give an approval. So I'll go with something like, let's say 45, not much. And I'll click on this create liquidity. If you click, it's going to make a call and it's going to open the MetaMask. So wait, and here we have, first we have to approve this wrap matty. So click on this next. Then I have to click on this approve and it's going to make another call. Just wait. And here I have to approve the TBC token. Click on this next approve. Now it's going to make one more call and it's going to create the liquidity. You can see we are calling this mint function and click on this confirm. And once this confirm is going to call another contract, which is our internal contract, which will store all of this information. So click on this confirm and finally the transaction is happening. So if I open this one and you can see the transaction is pending. Once the transaction is complete, we got this message and click on this and looks pretty fine. So. Finally, we have created the liquidity and if I come back here, 
you can see this is the another liquid we have added just now saturday jan 13 2004 this is the ad liquidity we have created just now you can simply click here and you can able to verify the transaction on the poly mumbai mumbai and if i take you to the uniswap here you can see right now we have one but the moment it will reload it will have two so just now we have created the liquidity of this two token so this was the old one and this is the new one so it's working absolutely fine and that's all information about the liquidity which you will create that all you will find here so now you know how you can allow the user to create liquidity now let's talk about buying token so if i click on this buy wix token it will take me to this particular place and right now i can buy it i can buy it with this particular account but i want to show you to switch my account to different account and let's buy from different so i'll come back in the very first account this much fund i have i'm going to clear my metamask history because i have changed my account okay let's come back here click here go to the settings go to the advance and clear the cache and reload the page let's select use metamask and it's connected now i want to buy the token so currently you can see that i my balance is 10 this much token wax token i hold in this particular account and right now we have a lot of token for sale so i'm going to buy close to let's say let's buy 10 because i don't have much fund and because here i have to pay the amount so i'm going to buy 10 click on this buy wix token it's going to load and it's going to open the metamask you can see i'm spending this much fund for buying the token simply click on this confirm and it's going to make the transaction and once it's transfer the fund it's calling the buy token function and just wait it's loading and once the transaction will complete it will read the page and finally i bought the token so here it's fetching the information just wait right now i have this 20 and here we have the 20. the market cap of the available token is this much so things are looking absolutely fine i hope you guys can understand that how beautiful and powerful this project is it will show you that how you can allow user to create liquidity on the existing pool that's all is reflecting here. So this one is powerful project which you can include in your portfolio to show your understanding about the DeFi protocol and how you can build different application. Now we can start working on our project. So first thing we have to create a folder and let's call this liquidity. And this is the folder we have to open in our VS code. So click on your code editor and in this project I'm using VS code. You can use any but I would suggest you to use this one because it has a lot of powerful extension which we can use it. Click on this open and go to the desktop and select the folder. So click and select. So once we have our folder ready, now we can start getting the strata file. So come back to the blockchain coder. And here you will find all the resources which you need to get for becoming a blockchain developer and building this project. So simply scroll all the way down and check all the project we have here. Now I have recently launched this particular course. So you can simply check that. Here you will find everything which you have to know like to master blockchain development, like sorty, programming language, multiple smart contract. And we're going to build one of the biggest project. You will have a couple of crash courses as well. So make sure to come and check this one. Now let's get the startup file. So click here, go to the source code. And here you will find all the project we have built on our channel. So simply scroll down and check all the project. We have more than 30 project and this is the one we're going to build it. So you can simply come here. You can simply filter by recent or you can simply type the name. So click on this get now. And here you will have this final code and the startup file. So you can get that or you can get the startup file. So click on the startup file. And here we are on getter. And here you will find all the startup file which you need to build this particular project. So simply copy this. And now copy this URL. Come back to the curator. And now we have to simply clone this repository. So simply type get clone, paste the URL and give this dot. So it's going to clone the repository in the same directory. If you don't provide this dot, it's going to create a separate folder. So provide and hit. It will take few seconds. And finally, we have cloned the entire repository. Now, let me give you a quick walkthrough that what exactly you will have into the startup file. So let me zoom a bit. Let's expand this one. The very first thing you have to do is you have to simply delete this one. Delete this one. Now, open this component folder. Inside that, you will have the CHB folder inside that you will have the icon and we have all rest of the components so if i open this one this is the two icon we have for the folder 
and then we have the access add liquidity pool all these components we have here and we're going to simply import all of the component to in this index file and from here we're going to export it which i have already done in the startup file so you don't need to do anything in here and we have the list of the component so far things are good now close this one now let's come back to the context and here you will find some important resources which we need to work around this crypto exchange so we have the api we have two different type of api one for the erc20 token and the one is for the factory contract which we are utilizing so this is the factory contract and this is the contract which we're going to build together so i have given you this api in advance but you can simply delete it or you can keep it but i would suggest you to let it be like this because later when we'll deploy the contract we'll generate a new aba and that's what we're going to simply replace with so this is fine we have all the aba and we have this constant in that we're going to do some setup for our addresses and the abis and here we're going to build the entire context management and that's what we're going to simply export from here so this is the context we have now we have the contract and inside the contract we have this three files we have ico contract liquidity contract and our token erc20 token contract which we're going to code together now we have to say the page it's going to be a single page application but here you can see in the app.js i have already done all the configuration for adding the javascript because we are using some sort of animation as you have seen in the demo so we are using all of these animations libraries which has different utility models that's what we are utilizing here so you have to let it be like this all these files are coming from the public folder so inside the public you will have the css font images and javascript folder so we are getting all of this from javascript and javascript plugin you can see it's had the huge files don't need to do anything in here so close this one now if you see this css file this is what we're going to import in our global css and we have the font and here we have the images which we go to utilize it so we have all of these different images which you can do the experiment but i would suggest you to simply follow the project the way i'm building it now close this one close this one now close this one and here we have the page index page and it's going to be a single page application so all the component we're going to simply import here and context function we're going to import here now close this one now come back to the script so so here we have the deploy script which we're going to create together for deploying this particular contract so here we have this style and we have the global css so i have already done the import so this is the css files we have and i have already written some custom css which you will find here you don't need to do anything in here once you complete the project you can do the modification in the color and the styling but just build as it is now we have the test which you don't need to worry about it here we have the utils folder in that we're going to write the utility function which we're going to use it like for handling error and for managing the addresses so that's what we have here and this is what we have and here we have done this particular configuration so close this one and here we have this next.js config file don't need to do anything in here and here we have this package.json file and you have to pay a little attention here because whatever script we're going to utilize it here whatever packages we're going to utilize is here it's 100 percent compatible the package version we are using here so this is the our script for development and here we have the dependency these dependencies are very important you have to use the exact one the one i'm using right here so this is the hardened version we are using make sure you have to use the exact one and everything looks fine don't need to do any changes here once you download the startup file so we have these packages now all we have to do is to simply install this one so come back here in the readme file here i have provided some important links which you can simply check so close this one now we have seen the folder and file structure for our project now it's time to install the packages so simply open up your terminal and simply clear your terminal now before you install the packages you have to check your node version so this particular hardware package is 100 percent compatible with this particular node so if i open this node so right now we have this 20 so those of you will have latest version of node like 19 20 this hardware is not compatible with this particular node version maybe in future they're going to update the hardware package and and it will be compatible with this particular node version but right now it's not compatible you can easily come back here in the hardware installation and here you will find the entire information that why it's not compatible when it's going to be compatible so make sure to come and have a look so it is compatible with this particular version so you have to install the exact node version which i am using because hardware is compatible with this particular node version if you will have the higher node version it's going to unzip the entire package 
and it will install individually one by one in that way this particular hardware will not going to work in the project so we need as a global installation which is compatible in this particular version so simply type uh we can type node dash v so make sure you have to have this particular node version v18.12.1 if you have the higher version make sure to downgrade it to this particular version which you can do it very easily and if you have the lower version make sure to upgrade it to this particular version now you have to also check your npm version so i'm using this particular one so these are the two must installation version you have to do in your computer before you start working on this project which is very easy all you have to do is to simply downgrade your node version to this particular one and in case of you don't want to use hard hat and you want to do all this deployment of the contract and testing on the test network then you can easily skip this hard hat for that what you have to do is make sure to create keep this particular folder contract and inside that make sure to have this three contract files and write down all the contract which we going to write it together in this particular project keep it there the only thing we have to do is you have to remove couple of folders you have to remove the script folder because we not we will not use the hard hat and you have to remove the hard hat config file and you have to also remove the hard hat packages from the packages and file simply remove that if you don't want to use hard hat in the project and want to do the deployment of the contract to the test network now come back here and let's try to install the packages you can see i'm getting this particular warning the reason why i'm not upgrading because i have couple of project which is going on and i have to do the testing and i'm using this unit test using the hardware that's why i'm keeping it but after few days once i will complete the project definitely i'm going to upgrade to my latest version and it will not cause any issue so simply remove that we have done the successful installation now let's start the application type npm run dev and here our application got started on localhost 3000 so simply copy this one and let's come back here open a new tab close this one open a new tab and paste here so our application is working absolutely fine we have done the entire setup properly and here we have this index text now looks good now come back here stop the application from running and let's clear it out close this one now what we're going to do is let's build out all the important functionality for our application functionality for our application so let's start with that so first thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to start with the utility model functionality so come back to utilities and here we have to write the two important function which allow us to short the address and whenever any error take place in the contract we have to capture that and we have to display in the front end as a meaningful message so let's build this two functionality which is very simple we can do it very easily so close this one we have to say export conch short address in that we're going to receive the address and all we have to do is to take this template literal we'll take this short address dot slice and I want to simply shot down the first six character. Then I want to take the last four character of the address. So it will give the first six, then it will give three dot, then it will give the last four character of the address. So this is the very first function we have. Now let's build the second function for throwing error. So we'll say export const parsed error message. It's going to take the entire error object. And once we have the entire object, of the error we have to simply take a variable called json we'll say json parse in that we have this particular data called json dot stringify and in that we can simply parse the error object so it will give the json information and now we have to simply return that so we'll take this json and we have to give this question mark because sometime what will happen that it will return undefined so we have to catch that as well so if we don't give this question mark it's going to throw an error that there is no data available and sometimes it takes a little bit time to get the data so always make sure to that you have to provide this question mark so it will put a condition and it will not throw an error if the data is not available there and we'll say reason else we can go with the error dot message got it if we don't have the message then we'll display the reason that why the transaction failed but if we have the message then we'll display the error message so this is the two function we have to write for our utility model hope things are clear to all of you guys now click here once we have here come back close this one and now what we're going to do is let's write down the contract so we have three contracts and these three contracts are pretty huge so let's write down that so open this one and the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to write our token contract we're going to write our token contract and you have two options 
to write this token contract you can use open zipman library for writing the contract for erc20 token or you can build your own custom but i want to show you everything from scratch that how you can build your own custom token with more functionality that's why i'm just going to write the custom token contract instead of using the library so here let's open this one now we have to simply write the license identifier so we're going to use this mit now we have to take the pragma solidly version and this time we're going to use 8.0 now let's call our contract to be weights and let's define a couple of state variables so first thing is going to be our name of the token you can go with the hard code or you can simply define the name of the token at the time of deployment but i'm going to go with the hard code so we have the name we're going to have the public symbol then we're going to have the standard so this is the additional variable i'm adding because in case in future i have a different standard of token which will have some other feature so that's why i'm giving this version one number then we have this unt variable is the total supply which i'm going to define at the time of deployment then we'll have the address of the contract owner and we're going to have this public user id because when the user will buy we have to keep the track of that particular user and assign a particular id to that then we can come back here and let's take the address in that we're going to keep all the user who will take our token and keep their addresses in this particular array now we can come back here let's take the event so we're going to take this transfer event and that we're going to take the address from address to and we're going to take the value this is the first event we have now we can come back here let's take the second event for approval and in that we can simply take this address index owner then we'll take this address index spender and the amount into unt value and close this one so this is the two events we have now we can come back here let's build the mapping so we have to map with address to a token holder information so this is the struct we're going to create it so i'll call it public because i want to get this information in the front end so all i have to do is to pass the address of the user and it will be give the entire information about that particular user that how many token he holds all of the things so it will be called let's token holder infos infos so this is the name i have given now we can come back here and i will take a struct let's build this one token holder info in that we're going to keep couple of information about the user so we need the token id then we need the address from then we need the address to then we need the unt total token like how many token a particular user have because the user can buy as many token as you want in multiple transactions so that's all we're going to store it here then we're going to take the boolean token holder and that these are the information we are keeping about the user now we can come back here let's take another mapping and this time we're going to map based on the id so we'll pass an address and going to return a unt variable so we'll take this public balance off now we're going to map another we'll say mapping and it's going to be a nested mapping and it's going to return call allowance and you can see i'm getting this particular comment because i'm using this particular extension in my vs code and that's why it's giving me this suggestion where i can create the documentation but in your case you won't have this one so don't be panic that what what extra i'm getting just simply write the contract now we have this constructor and in that we have to initialize the initialize the supply of the token so i'll call initial supply and first thing i have to define the owner so we'll say contract equal to message or sender then i have to take the balance and i have to assign this balance to the contract owner we'll say initial supply and then i have to set the total to be initial supply this is simple what we are doing here we are taking the total supply of the token and then we are simply assigning the signer as a contract owner then we are setting the token supply as a owner to the address the the deployer of the contract and we are setting the total supply variable this is the constructor we have now we can come back here now we're going to build the very first function called increment i call it in because this will generate a new id when you are using open zeppelin library you don't need to create this library because 
you don't need to use this function because you will find a library which you can simply import and it will generate a new token but we want to build everything from scratch it's going to be an internal function and all it's going to do is it's going to increment the user id plus plus once we have that now we can come back here now we'll build the next function let's call this transfer it's going to take the address to and the value the value now once we have that one let's build this public return it's going to return the boolean and success so when the transfer will happen it will return either succeed or failure means true and false now we can take this requirement and check for a condition means balance of the user who is calling this particular function has to be greater than the amount of money he want to transfer hope you guys have understood that what we are doing here we are checking the balance of the user who try to transfer the fund and the amount he has put for transferring it has to be greater than that if it's not then we have to throw the error message or cancel the transaction if the amount is greater in the balance then we have to simply call this increment function and it's going to create an id now we can simply take the balance of the user and we have to subtract from his account and we have to simply update it to the sender address means two that's how we are doing the transfer now we can take this token holder information and we have to simply update that information so we'll take this token holder info token holder to once we update that now we can take this token holder info and we have to update all of things so two is going to be two this is token holder from message dot sender then we have the token holder info total token then we have the total information token holder to true and then we have this token id to user id so we are simply updating all this information in our struct looks good now we can come back here and we have to simply push this particular user in an array and we have to initialize our transfer event sender to and value and close our function return the true and we have to simply close this one hope you guys have understood what we are doing first we are checking for a condition then we are doing the transfer then we are changing the state in our struct and then we are meeting the event and that's the only thing so this is the first second so this is the second function transfer now let's write the next function call function approve and we'll say address spender amount is going to be the value which user wants to approve to other user to transfer on behalf of him so this is the very normal function which you have to attach if you are building an erc20 token so you can check their documentation that what are the required function you need to have in your token so this is the approve now it's going to be a public we'll have the return and it's going to return the boolean success or false then here, what we're going to do is first we're going to take this allowance and we have to check that message dot sender and spender so we have to build that relation it's going to be the value means the message dot sender who's calling this function he's allowing the spender to spend this much fund so that's what we have built now we have to simply initialize this approve statement we are allowing message dot sender spender and volume that yeah value and we have to simply return true so this is a very simple function it's not science rocket we are taking the address of the spender and the volume of money the token he wants to send on behalf of us and that's what we are simply building here in this allowance so this is our approve function now we can simply go to the next function let's call this transfer from this is also a very magnitude function which you have to follow in erc erc20 token development so we're going to take this address from then we're going to take this address to and we have to take the value these are the information we are getting then we have to make it public return and we're going to return success or failure in that we have to take this required statement and we have to check for a condition so we'll say value should be less or equal to the balance of the user means the one who try to approve or transfer from we have to check his balance and his balance should be less than the amount he tried to send that's the condition we have to check if it's not that then we have to simply cancel the transaction and throw an error that's the first required statement we have now we have to check the another one we'll say value less 
or equal to allowance from and message at center. And this is the second required statement in that we are checking the value to the allowance which you try to give to the signer message.sender. So this is the two requirement we have. Now we can simply come back here. We'll take the balance of the user who's trying to call it and we have to subtract his fund. And all we have to do is to simply update to the two in his account. Once we're done with that, now we can take this allowance and simply deduct this message.sender to his volume because when the user will allow someone else to transfer the fund on behalf of him so he has given couple of amount to them so we have to subtract it from that amount as well which he allowed so if i allowed account b to transfer 50 token on behalf of me so whenever the 50 token transfer take place i have to deduct that 50 transfer we have to simply initialize the event transfer from to and value and we at the end we have to simply return a true and that's our transfer form function. So far, pretty easy, not that complicated. All we are doing is simply checking for a condition, then updating the balance and simply changing the state of the token. Now we can come back here. Let's build the next function called get token holder data. All we have to do is to simply get the address of the holder and it's going to return the entire information about that particular user, that how much fund he has, what is the token ID, everything and all. So we'll take this public view return and it's going to return a lot of data. So we have to return UNT, then we have to return address. We have to return address from to um, this will be UNT. This will be Boolean. And these are the five information we are taking. Now we have to simply return that. So we're going to simply use the mapping. So we'll take this return, we'll take this token holder and that we can simply pass the address and we'll call it token ID. And this is exactly the same thing we have to do for other data as well. This one is two and this one is going to be from and this one is going to be the supply, the token value, total token and it's going to be the holder or not. So it will turn the Boolean value token holder. And these are the information we are simply returning from this particular function. Pretty simple, not that complicated. Now let's come back here. Let's move to the next function. We'll call it get token holder. And this will return the all the token holders. So we'll take this public view return and it's going to return an address array because we already have taken this array and we're going to return the entire users. So we can come back here. We'll take this return holder token. And that's the only thing we have to do. And this is the entire contract we have. You can see we have taken this state variable for our token. This is the solidity version, license identifier. This is the state variable of our token, initial state. In this, we are keeping the address of all the holders. This is the event, approve transfer. This is the mapping for token holder info. This is the struct. In that, we are keeping the ID from to total token and token holder state. We have this two mapping, one for allowance, one for balance of. We have the constructor, which will initialize our contract. Here we have the increment function, and this is the transfer function we have. So we are taking this information, checking for a condition, updating the balance, and updating the struct. And at the end, we are simply returning the true. Simple. So simply close this one. And looks good. Now let's close this one as well. So this is the one, close this one as well. So this is the transfer, this is the proof. Very simple, getting this, close this one, close this one, and here we have this transfer from, close this, and this is the changes, close this one, and here we have this get token holders, and simply running all of the data, close this, and close this one, and here we have this get token holder information. So this is the entire smart contract we have written for our token. And that's what we're going to utilize it in our ICO, token ICO sales contract. So click here. Now we have to go and write this particular contract, ICO works. So this is the next contract we're going to write it. So come back here. First, we have to import the license identifier. Then we have to take the Pragma Sanity version. We have to import our token contract, which is coming from the same directory. Now we have to build the contract. So let's call this ICO works. Then we have to refer the address. So we'll say admin 
then we have to take the token contract so we'll say works public token contract and this is what we're going to initialize at the time of deployment of this particular contract in that we have to simply pass the address of the token this is what we have now we can take this unt256 public which is going to keep the price of the token which we have to initialize at the time of deployment of the contract now we can take this unt variable we'll call it token sold that this will keep the count of how many tokens got sold so far because we have to transfer the tokens to our token sell contract which is going to have the details that how much token is available in the token sell contract for sale and whenever any sale will take place we have to simply update into our token sold unt variable now we can come back here let's take an event we'll say sell we'll take the buyer it's going to take the amount then we're going to come here we'll take the constructor and in that we have to simply take the address of the token contract let's say token contract but then we have to take the price as well token price so once we have that we have to simply update the admin address message.center then we have to update the token contract to be token contract and we have to update the price of the token so we'll take price token price to be token price so this is the constructor we have now we can come back here now we have to write our very first function so let's call this multiply and that we're going to take two number x and y it's going to be internal function we'll say pure return it's going to return the third variable which is a c i hope you guys are following the interview questions and playlist in which we have talked about this extensively that what role it's play and what kind of question you will be asked when you will start giving the interview so make sure to check that playlist as well so it's going to run the c variable you i call it z but you can call it c as well so all we have to do is in that we have to check for a condition that y is equal to zero or z equal to x and y and we have to divide it by y equal to x simple so this is the multiply function we have now we can come back here let's write the next function call buy token in that we have to take a unity variable so number of token which user wants to take it will be public payable because there is a fund transfer now we have to check for the required condition that message dot value should be equal to multiplied and in that we have to simply pass the number of token which user wants to purchase and the price it's going to give us the calculation which we can simply compare here that's what we have here now we can come back we we'll check the next condition that contract token contract dot balance so now the second check we are doing that we are checking for the contract balance the token sell contract balance should be greater or equal to be the number of token which user wants to purchase so this one is little tricky it's not tricky it's very simple in the first condition check we are checking for the price the number of token user wants to buy it and the price is paying and then in the second statement we are checking for the token ico token balance to the number of token which user wants to purchase these are the two checks we have now we can come back here let's do the third check token contract transfer and we have to simply call this message dot sender and the number of token he wants to purchase because we have to convert it into an ether so we have to say one and we have to provide 18 zero hope you guys have understood that what exactly we have done we are simply doing the transfer using the function called transfer which we have inside the token contract and we are passing the address and the number of token and we are simply multiplying with the like one and 80 18 zero once the transaction take place we have to simply update our token sold to the number of token got sold and we have to simply initialize our cell event message dot send a number of token and close this function so this one is pretty easy function we are doing a couple of check and transfer of the fund updating the, our token sold state and initializing the event now we can come back here let's write the next function call function end cell this this function is very important like in the previous contract you will find that this function was not there but in recent time what happening in most of the ico contract having this particular function because sometimes what happened that sometimes some kind of bugs you will have in your token contract or maybe token ico contract so you can end that particular contract and prevent the user for buying the token so that's why it's a very important function which you have to keep in mind whenever you are building any kind of function which is going to reset everything so we'll call this end sale it's going to be a public and here we have to simply call this requirement so we'll say message dot sender is going to be the admin because he is the only one who can call this function 
and here we're going to make the second check we'll take this token contract dot transfer and we have to simply transfer the fund to the admin address so admin and we'll transfer the entire fund which is available in the token contract we'll say address this close this one close this one then we have to simply call this payable admin transfer balance and that's going to make the transfer and that's the only thing we have to do here in this particular contract pretty simple pretty straightforward we have the basic functionality which allows us to do this transaction so first thing we have taken this light is sent identifier sorority version then here we have imported our token contract we have if i come back here you can see this is the token contract we have built and that's what we are importing here and here we have the state variable which keep the admin address token contract price and token sold we have the event we have the constructor we are simply updating the information in our state variable we are taking the token contract address and the price and then we have this multiplier function which is going to track the pricing of the token then we have this buy function we have this 18 you can simply calculate it or you can simply use any kind of converter so that's what we have here now we are simply updating then we have this end cell which is pretty simple function so we are done with this ICO works contract as well looks fine no issue we have looks good now come back here and now we have to write the liquidity contract which is going to keep the track of all the liquidity which user will click using our platform and so this is what we're going to build now so we'll take a license identifier then we have to take the salty pragma version is going to be 8.10 and now we're not going to import anything in here. Let's call this contract and call this liquidity. In that, we have to take the address public admin, the one who will deploy the contract. Then we have to take the mapping and we have to map the struct. So we'll say liquidity information. It's going to be an array type. We'll say public liquidities. Okay. Make sure to give the exact name the way I'm giving. So liquidities. Once we have the mapping, now we can come back here. Let's take a UNT variable called liquidity ID. So by, by liquidity ID, and it's going to start with zero. One, two, three. After every token will get, this number will go up. Then we can take a struct called liquidity information. In that, we're going to take all the information from the user. So we want to take the ID. Then we'll take the address, the one who's doing the transaction. Then we'll take the token A. And the token B because the user can create liquidity in two different tokens in the pair. Then we have to take the token address A and token address B. You can keep as, as many information as you want. It's totally up to you. Then we can keep the pool address in which pool the user have created the liquidity. Then we have to keep the track of network, which network. Then we have to keep the track of the transaction hash. So when the user will create a successful transaction, we have to keep that information of the hash. And at the end, we have to take the time when the user have created the liquidity. And these are the information we are taking simply into our liquidity information, which we're going to simply display in the front end. So this is the struct we have. Now we can come back here and take the modifier. We'll take this only honor because I want to restrict certain function within the contract to be allowed to call by only owner of the contract, not by anyone. So this kind of function is very important in the contract. Then we can take a required statement and we have to check for a condition that message.sender should be equal to the admin, the one who is calling the function. Otherwise we have to throw this error message that only admin can call this function. So this is a simple statement, like whoever is calling the function, check that he should be admin. If it's not, then we have to throw the error message and we have to stop the calling function. That's the first check. Now we have to give this slash. So if this particular condition fulfilled, then we have to simply execute to the other code, which is inside the function. So this is the first modifier we have. Now we can come back here. Let's take the constructor in that we're not going to do anything. We have to simply update the admin address because he's the one who's going to deploy the contract. That's the constructor. Now we can come back here. Let's call this function add liquidity and in that we have to simply take all the information about the liquidity and we have to simply update into a smart contract so let's do that we're going to take 
string memory token a then we have to take the token b then we have to take the token a address then we have to take the token b address then we have to take the pool address and we have to take the network then we have to take the transaction hash so these are the information we are taking inside this function and we'll call it external once we have that we'll take this liquidity id and we have to simply increment then we have to create a new id call this current liquidity id to liquidity id and now we can simply update into our struct so we'll take this liquidity message dot sender push to the liquidity info and we have to simply update so make sure to manage the order this is the exact order we have defined in our struct and you have to pass the data in the exact order so we have the id then we have the owner message dot sender then we have the token a then we have the token b then we have the token a address then we have the token b address then we have the network pool address then we have the network and the last one is going to be not last one we have the kiri transaction hash and the last one is going to be created log dot timestamp it will give us the so it will give us a time now simply close that so that's how we can update the information into our liquidity the struct we have created now we can simply come back here and close this one so this is the only thing we have to do here into this particular function we don't want to read out anything so that's the only thing we have to do here now we can come back here let's build out other function which allows us to get the information from this contract so we'll take this function get all liquidity in that we have to simply pass the address because here what i'm going to do is i'm going to restrict the user to access only their liquidity which they will create using our dap so this is a very important because we have to keep their liquidity private you can make it global and display all the liquidity which user will create but i want to go with you can simply display all the liquidity which user will click in your dap but i don't want to do that i want to display to the user only their liquidity not others liquidity so we'll take this address we'll say public view return and it's going to return the entire liquidity array now we're going to take this return liquidity we have to simply run that and that's the only thing we have to do now we can come here let's write another function called transfer ether external paper because sometimes we have to take money from the user so we'll call this requirement message dot value should be greater than zero we'll say amount should be greater than zero because if it's zero then we have to stop that execution now we can simply transfer the ether to the specify address i'll call this boolean success we'll say admin dot call we'll say value message dot sender and here we have to simply check if there is a success then we have to call transfer failed it can it success can return true and false so if it's false then we can say transfer failed but if it's true then it will succeed and that's the only thing we have to do here I hope you guys have understood that what exactly we have to do. This is pretty simple. We have taken this contract, license identifier, liquidity, storing the state variable. This is the struct. We are taking all of this information about the liquidity. Close this one. Here we have the only admin function. We have the constructor, and this is the only function which will pass all of this data and is going to update all of this information into our smart contract. That's good. Close this one. And here we have this get all liquidity function, which allow us to get all the liquidity created by us, a single user. And here we have this transfer ether function. Close this one. So that looks good. Now we can come back here and things are looking pretty fine. So we have done the most important part. You can call it the backbone of our entire DAP. We have written all of the smart contract. So it looks good. This liquidity works pretty good. Okay, close this one close this now we can come back here 
and we can do one thing like this is the contract we have written let's write down the script and let's deploy this particular contract which we have written i'm going to use this particular deploy script for deploying the contract using hardhat but if you don't want to use hardhat you can use a remix id and deploy the contract to any test network but i would encourage you to use hardhat because hardhat is a powerful tool it will allow you to test your contract very deeply and it's a powerful tool when it's come to smart contract development so i would always encourage you to use and learn about hardhat because this is the most required skill you need to have when you start working in a an organization so let's write down the script for deployment so first thing we have to import the hardhat i'll call it hre because that's what they have refer in their documentation and that's what i'm going to call it but you can literally call anything now we, once we have that now we have to build a function which allow us to convert the ether into way and we're going to use it for a price we're going to use it for a token so let's call this one tokens in that we're going to pass the number of token and it's going to simply convert into a way so we'll take this return ether dot utils dot parsed unit in that we have to simply pass the number of tokens and we have to convert it into a string and we have to say ether got it it will simply convert that into ether all you have to do is to pass the number so this is the function we have now we can come back here and let's write the main script which allow us to deploy the contract so we'll take this async call function main in that we have to first deploy our token contract because our token contract the ico contract is dependent on the token contract so order is very important so I'll call this works token. I'll call this initial supply. So what is the supply I want for my token? I already built this internal function called token. I want to be having this much supply for my token. Pretty huge, more than a million, a billion you can call it. Now we have the token supply. I can come back here. Let's build the works and let's deploy the token. So we'll take this await hard at dot ether get contract and that we have to pass the contract name so we'll say get contract factory takes the contract name and this is the name we have given to our contract okay that's very important whatever name you have given to your contract you have to pass the exact name that's how our script can identify the contract and it can deploy then we have to take the entire object in return we'll have the object and we have to simply call the deploy method so we'll take this works with a small earlier I have taken in a capital but here I have taken the small you can call it whatever you want but this is the convention I follow when I write my script for the deployment so let's call this await wix dot deploy in that we have to simply pass the initial supply and that's what we are receiving in our smart contract in the token smart contract so this is the first thing we have now I'm going to simply call this wix wix dot deploy is going to deploy the contract and I can simply console about the address of the token Wix dot address on this particular method dot address is available in the old version of hardhat not in the latest one in the latest one we have different method we don't have this get contract factory it has a different method and it has a different keyword for getting the address it has target in the latest version so make sure to use the exact version which i'm using so this is how we have successfully deployed our token contract now we have to deploy our ico contract and we have to do the exactly the same thing in ICO contract. We have to pass two things. We have to pass the price and we have to pass the address of the token contract. So we can take the price and we have this particular function. All I have to do is to simply pass the amount I want to set for my token. So this is the fund I want to set for my token. So one token is equal to like 0.001 ether. Once I have that, now I can do the same thing which I have done above for the token contract. Pass the contract name ICO works. Then I can simply call the method on the object ICO works deploy and in that I have to pass the token address. So I already have that works dot address and I have this token price. So these are the two things we are receiving in our token soil contract. Now we have to call this await and deploy and console log the address of this ICO token. ICO contract sorry. So we have deployed the ICO contract as well. Now we have to deploy our liquidity contract. So call liquidity do the exactly the same thing get contract factory liquidity we'll say liquidity deploy and we'll say await dot deploy and we have to simply console log out the address got it now let's call this particular function so we can come here main 
catch and if it things goes wrong we have to catch that error as well so we can say console.log else we can simply proceed ahead and we can say process.exit code 1 and simply do this I hope you guys have understood the what exactly we have done here that's a very simple script we have written and we have written tons of time this in our other project so this is the hard we have this utility function we have created right here. convert the amount into ether and here we have the token deployed we are deploying and getting the address then we are deploying the ICO we are getting the address and we are deploying our liquidity contract and that's the only thing we have to do here in the deploy script pretty good now we can come back here close this one and now we can start working on our other section of our project so this is the script it looks fine now let's try to deploy this contract and generate the artifact and the api so this is the exact configuration you have to do again i'm telling you this is the exact configuration you have to do this particular endpoint you can see i have used actively for this particular endpoint rpc endpoint this might not work in the future because i can delete that so you have to paste your own rpc endpoint so to get that come back here you can see first thing you have to get the private key of your wallet so i'll simply log into my metamask and i can go back to my let's come here i'm connected to the polygon mumbai because there we go to deploy this particular contract so make sure to connect with the mumbai and if you don't have this mumbai network in your metamask so this is how you can add it so make sure to open a new tab and go to the poly scan and this is the main net if you want to add mainnet into your metamask because when you will install metamask in your browser for the very first time it will not have this particular network so you have to add it manually so come back to the poly scan simply scroll all the way down and here you will find this button so click on this polygon mainnet in your metamask and if you want to add the test network so you can come back click on this and here we have that mumbai test click and simply scroll and here you will find the button you can click and you can add this network as well i have already added that's why you can see it's throwing me this particular error so once you're done with that make sure that you have to select that particular network so i'm going with mumbai and now you have to get the address which you want to use it so i'm going to use this particular account account number six or i can go with the account number one but what i'm going to do is i'm not going to use this account number one because in the last to last project i exposed my account private key and some of you have drained my entire test fund so that's why i'm not going to expose this particular one uh, I can go back to the account number 6 because you guys all know the private key of this account 6. So I'm going to use this particular account. I go back to the account details and here I can get my private key. So click on this and give the password and press and here you have the private key. Simply copy and again I'm telling you this one is very sensitive. If someone knows your private key they can easily withdraw all the fund which you have in your wallet address so this one is very sensitive you should never expose this this is my test network that's why i'm showing you so simply copy this one and that's what you have to add here because this is the account i'm going to use for deploying the contract so simply paste here got it this is the very first step you have to do you have to do and come back here and now you can simply get some free faucet test faucet mumbai which you can use it for deployment in my case i have this much fund in my test network test account but you can get it if you don't have so come back here click on the very first link and here you will find all the network so you can pick any network for deployment of the contract but i'll use polygon mumbai which is very straightforward and you don't need to have a real fund in your account to use this faucet but if you want to go with gorilla sofali they want you to have some real fund in your account then you can easily able to claim some free faucet so i'll go with the mumbai click and here you have to simply paste the address of your wallet so i will copy the address i'll paste here and i'm going to make a request and it's going to give the transaction so if we'll simply transfer the fund to my account it will take a little bit time you can see the transfer went through i can simply do one thing i can close this one and let's open it and here you can see i got the fund back into my wallet address so this is the first thing you have to do paste your address and you have to get your own private key and get some fund into that rpc endpoint i will delete in future so it will not work anymore so you have to get your own rpc so i can show you how you can get it so come back here go to a n a r n k rpc so this is the website which will provide you free npc endpoints which you can use so 
come back to the endpoints here you will find all the network i'm using polygon mumbai so i click on this polygon and this is the main net and this is the test net so i'll click on the test net and here i have these two options so i'll go with mumbai and simply copy and that's what you have to provide here paste here and save it and here we have this rpc endpoint then we have the wallet address and here we are simply deploying so i'm doing this transaction on the mumbai test network you can use it using the remix id which i will show you so let's deploy this particular one using hard hat now you can simply open up your terminal and let's write this particular command npx hard act run network polygon mumbai script slash deploy so this is what we have here in the script and that's what we are deploying you can see this is the one which we are calling now simply copy and paste in your terminal and hit enter this will take few seconds and it will deploy your contract and it will generate your artifact in that you will have the api of the contract so here uh, enter just wait we have compiled successfully you can see here we have the artifact inside the artifact we have this three folder like ico liquidity and vex in that i have the api of the contract which we need to interact with our contract so here you can see we have deployed the two contract just wait for the three and here we have this so we have successfully deployed the three contract so please select and copy or you can do one thing if i open this context in that you will see this is the old abis which i have provided you can simply delete this one or you can keep it it's totally up to you but make sure whenever you do any changes in the contract it will change the abi as well so you have to redeploy that contract and you will get the latest abi and that's what you have to provide here so i'll simply delete this one i'll simply delete this one old abi and delete this ico abi I would suggest you to first build the project as it is after that do all the modification because once you complete the project you will understand everything and then you can do modification if you do the modification straight away you might get confused and you might create error so simply copy this one and that's what we have to provide here in the context so i'll paste here and i'm going to comment this out now i'm going to simply take the abi and drag and drop here so this is the abi i have simply drag and drop here let's do this for the liquidity and we can do the exactly the same thing with the our token so we got all the abi close this one close this one close this one so that's the first thing we have to do so we have successfully deploy our contract we got the latest aba and now we have to work on our constants here we have to import the aba and export the addresses all of the things we're going to do it and we're going to build a couple of utility function as well so in case if you want to deploy the contract using remix id you can do that very easily as well so come back to the remix id I believe that you guys know what it is and what is allow you to do so here i'm on the remix id i'm going to simply use this particular project and this is the one and i'm going to create a contract so let's click on the new file uh, let's call this deploy you can call whatever you want so this is what i have and now i can simply go back to my contract which we have created and i have to simply get that so you have to deploy it one by one so first you have to deploy the token then you have to deploy the liquidity and then you have to deploy the wax token this is the structure you have to follow because this is what the structure we have followed in our harder deployment so i'll copy the entire token and i'll simply paste here you can see i got it and here i have to do the changes i have to use injected provider because i want to use test network if i see here we got the chain id for the mumbai and it's going to fetch the balance and the address so this much font i have and you can simply check here as well so this is the first thing you have to do paste your contract here and here you will find the contract and this is the contract which i am deploying and you have to provide the initial supply so you can use the way converter because you, if you look at the constructor in that we have to simply pass the initial supply for the token and that's what we have done so let's come back open a new tab and you can use this particular website to convert it from ether to way so it's called way converter click on this and i want to have my token supply to be something like uh, let's call this five fifty thousand copy this one and that's what you have to provide because we have to pass the supply in way paste here and click on this transaction it's going to call the contract and here you can see metamask popped up and we are deploying the contract to the polygon click on confirm and it's going to deploy the contract so it will take few seconds and here the deployment successful and you got the 
instead of the contract. So here we have all the function we have built in our contract and you can straight away interact with your contract from here. This is the name. You can check the supply. You can check all of that. So simply copy the address and come back to your code. Go to the contents, constants, and all you have to do is to, instead of this address, which we have got from Hardhat, you can simply replace with your, but I'm going to use the Hardhat one. So this is the exact thing you have to do for deploying the contract and getting the address. So that's how you can deploy. And in case of ABI, you can easily able to get the ABI as well. So if you come back here, so the moment you will deploy the contract, it's going to compile it and it will give you this artifact. Inside this artifact, you can see we have this contract, vex.json. So you can simply copy this entire ABI. This is the exact ABI you will get when you will deploy from the hardware or you can deploy from the Remix ID. So if you scroll down here, you can see this is the ABI I have. So they copy this one and that's what you can simply use it here. In this way, you don't need to be dependent on Hadat. You can simply straight away interact with the, straight away interact with the Remix ID and deploy and get the ABI. So this is exactly what you have to do for all the contracts. I hope it gave you a better idea that what exactly you have to do if you don't want to use hardhat. But I would encourage you to use hardhat because in that way you will understand hardhat and it will help you a lot when you will start working the DeFi and testing the contract. So we're done with that. Now we can start working in our constants. So we have the three address now. We can come back here. We'll import ether package. Then we have to import Web3 model. Many of you have said that Web3 model is depreciated. Yes, but you have to use the exact version and it will work fine. Because this particular package will allow you to write custom functionality for connecting with the wallet. And it's pretty straightforward. So we have these two packages. Now we can come back here. Now we have to do the internal import. So we have to import the API. So we'll take this factory API, which is already given to all of you guys. It's coming from the same directory. Then we have to import the ERC20 API and it is also given. And now we have to use our ABI, which we have created for our tokens. So we'll call it Woke token ABI. Then we have to in get the ICO ABI. Then we have to get the liquidity ABI. We have all of this. Now we can come here and let's build the export module for the tokens ICO and liquidity. So we can call this into our context folder. So let's start with the token first. I'll take export const and let's call this works address and this is the address of our token. I've simply copy and pasted here. Now we have to simply export the ABI token ABI. So I'll say export const works ABI and we have this works dot ABI. So this is for the token. Now let's do for the ICO token sale const ICO address and let's paste that address, the address of the token sale contract. Now let's do the same thing with the ABI of the token cell. We'll say ICO.ABI. Now we have to do the exactly the same thing with the liquidity address. And this is the liquidity address. Now we have to export the ABI of the liquidity. And this is what we have. Now we have to get the factory contract address because we are using this particular contract, which is already deployed by Uniswap on all the network. And it has the same address, no matter which network you are deploying your contract. Gorilla, Sofali, Polygon, Avalanche, it has the same address. So let's call this export const factory ABI, which we already have factory ABI. And now we can simply get the address and simply paste it. On this particular address, I will provide you in the description. So you can simply copy from there and you can paste or you can also get it from the GitHub repository in the readme file. I can provide you there. So from there, you can simply copy and paste it here. Because this address is very important because some of the contract function we're going to utilize is for making the transaction. So this is the factory. Now we have to simply call this position manager address. And this address I'm also going to provide you. So these are the two addresses I'm going to provide you in the description or in the GitHub repository. So you can simply get it from there. So we are doing all this import and export from here. Now we can simply come here and let's build the fetch contract functionality. We'll call it fetch contract. It's going to take the signer or you can call it provider signer. We'll take the ABI and the address. These are three things we're going to receive it. And we're going to call this ether package, ether.contract. And in that we can pass the address, then the ABI and the signer. So it's going to fetch the information about the contract. Now we can come back here. Let's build the functionality for 
called web3 provider and this is very important because sometimes what happened that we have to call the provider and create a provider object within the function so let's build the as a utility function which we can call in our context management so let's call this async and in this we're going to use the web3 package so we'll take this try and catch to check if anything goes wrong we have to catch that error and we can display as a meaningful error message so we'll take this const web3 model and we have to use the package web3 model now we have to build the connection once we have the connection then we have to build this web3 model dot connect once we have the connection then we have to simply build the provider we'll say provider new ether provider dot web3 provider in that we can pass the connection in that way we can get the provider once we have the provider we can simply return the provider from the function so we'll have the provider object and we can catch an error if anything goes wrong so let's console log out the entire error object so far things are good pretty simple we are building this particular function which will return the provider so when the user will connect with any network any wallet it's going to create the provider object which we can utilize it to connect with the contract now we can come back here and we can simply build the functionality so we have built a multiple function for each one of this contract but you can make it as a global but i want to teach you everything from basic so i'm going to create a separate function for each of the contract but you can optimize it for a global object so you can use the class construction method to generate an object all you have to do is to pass the data and it's going to do it but i'll go with a simpler approach so you guys can understand everything in basically so let's call the export const we'll call connecting contract it's going to be an async and that we have to receive the address once we have that we'll take this try and catch so we have to catch an error and now we have to get the provider so we'll use the same packages we have to do the same thing for connection so we'll say await web3 dot connect once we have the connection we have to simply pass the ether provider web3 provider in that we can pass the connection so in that way we can use it the provider once we have the provider or we can use the above provider function we have created so, but i want to keep it sync separate so let's go with the basically so we have the provider now i can come back here let's create the network because sometimes we have to get the network information that which network user are connected with and that's the information we have to pass into our contract because we have a data field in our contract where we are keeping the track of the network so take this network we'll call it await provider dot get network and it's going to give you the entire object of the network include the name chain id and the rpc once we have the network now we can come back here let's take a variable called signer and we'll call it get signer it will give me the signer object so once i have the signer object i can come back here i can take the contract and i'm going to call the internal function i have built fetch contract and that we have to pass the signer object and abi and the address so these are the three things we have to pass got it now we're going to take this the address will come from a function when the user will pass the address into this function and it's going to simply call all of this now what we have to do is once we have the contract now we can simply get the information so we'll take this user address so it's a very easy function we can get it I want you to write it down how to get a user address. I'm going to pause for a uh, two seconds and let's write it down. I hope you guys have written down the how to get a user address function. So let me write it down. So we'll say cons user address. We'll say signer dot get address, and this will give me the address of the user who connected with application. Once we have the user address, now I can take this balance and let's check that. So we'll take this contract dot balance, and that we can simply pass the user address. So it will give us the balance. Of the user in that particular contract. So once we have that one, now we can take this const name. I can take the name of the contract. I can take the symbol of the token. I can take the supply. I can take the decimal point, and I can take the address coming from contract dot address. So all of this information I'm getting. From this, looks good. Now we can come here. Let's take a variable called token, and store all of this information as an object, and that's what we're going to return it. So let's call that address going to be an address. Then we have to take the name. Then we have to take the symbol. Then we have to take the decimal point. Then we have to take the supply, and we have to simply convert it into ether. So we'll take this ether utils format ether and then we can pass the supply to a string 
and we have to do the exactly the same thing for the balance as well so let me quickly pass the balance and it will convert it now we have to simply return the chain id as well and this chain id is available in the network so we'll call it network chain id and close this one so these are the information we are simply returning in this particular function so all we have to do is to pass the address of the token and it's going to return all of this information including the balance of the user and all this information like name supply decimals all of that and now we can simply return this one return this token and we have to simply catch an error if anything goes wrong so this one is a utility function it's going to return all the valid information about the token all we have to do is to pass the token address and you will have all the details including your balance so we are done with this particular function now we can come back here now we can export call const internal works contract so this is the function we're going to write it down for the our token contract the internal token contract so let's build an async now we have to simply build a try and catch we have to get the web3 model and we have to build the provider so let me do it connection web3 dot connect now we have to build the provider web3 connection so we have the provider now we have to get the contract so we'll take the contract and we have the internal function called fetch contract and that we have to simply pass the provider and ABI which we have imported on top and we have to pass the address it's going to give the contract object of this internal token we have now we have to simply return the entire contract so we can simply call in our front end in our context and that's the internal contract and we have to simply catch an error looks good and that's exactly the same thing we have to do for other so let's call the export internal ICO works contract and exactly the same thing we have to do so let me do it that we'll say cons web3 model then we have to get the connection once we have the connection then we have to get the provider once we have the provider we have to call the contract so we'll simply call our internal function and we're going to pass the provider api and address and at the end we have to simply return the contract so this one is for the icu contract and we have to do the exactly the same thing with the liquidity contract as well so let's call it internal at liquidity and let's build that contract object so let's wrap that in try and catch we have this connection then we have this provider once we have the provider we can take the contract and call our internal function and pass down the relevant information provider liquid ABI and address and we have to simply return the contract and catch an error if anything goes wrong so this is the add liquidity i hope you guys have understood you can see there is a lot of repetitive code we have written you can simply modify this in advanced utility model class structure where you're going to use the class structure all you have to do is to pass the abi and the address and you will get the relevant information about the contract but i want to keep things simple that's why i'm going with this approach so you guys can understand that what exactly happening now let's write down one more function for getting the balance of the user so it's going to be an async and it have to be take the try and catch we'll take a variable called web3 model then we have to build the connection then we have to get the provider then we have to simply call the function called signer dot get signer and on that we can simply call the balance we'll say signer dot get balance and that's what we're going to simply return it and we have to catch an error if anything goes wrong so pretty good so that's all we have to write here i hope you guys have understood that what exactly we have done all of the things we have so we have this addresses the modules the abi the internal abi the token abi and the address and you can see if i come back here coming there now we have the ico liquidity and these are the two addresses which I have provided in the description and in the GitHub repository in the starter file. So you can get it from there as well. So this, the factory manager ABA and the 
position manager the EBA and the factory address and this is the internal function we have so this is the very first function called web3 provider this is the connecting contract for the token ERC20 token because you different token so we need to get the information about those token as well close this one then we have this internal wex token then we have the ICO liquidity and we have the get bahadam looks pretty fine so we are done with this now we can start working on the context so we are done with that now we can come back here and now we can start working on our context setup click on this and this is what we go to work next now we have to import react use state use effect and that's coming from react then we have to import ether and contract that's coming from ether then we have to import web3 model then we have to import xcs and we all we already install all of these packages if you check in our packages on file then we have to import the unisoft v3 pool because we are using the contract factory and we have this abi we have to get into the unisoft v3 code artifact inside the artifact we have a contract inside the contract we have this unisoft v3 pool and we from there we have to get the abi of this particular contract because we already have the address and if we have the aba so we can simply pass that and we can get the contract object which we can interact so let's get the abi of the unis of v3 pool once we have that now we can simply import the toaster so if anything goes wrong we have to display the notification success or failure now we can simply do the import of the token and that's also coming from the unis of sdk core in this token all we have to do is to pass the relevant information like token address, name, symbol, chain ID and decimal point is going to create the token contract object which is going to pass into our Unisoft contract. Then we have to simply import the pool, position, nearest usable tick and that's coming from Unisoft V3 SDK. Then we have to import the ABI and we can call it as Unis I Unisoft V3 pool. ABA and that's coming from Unisoft V3 core artifact contract interface UI Unisoft V3 pool and we have to get the ABI. Then we have to simply import the ABI as non fungible position manager because that's the address we have in the contract and we have to interact with the A contract as well. And that's also coming from Unisoft V3 periphery artifact contract interface non-fungible position manager abi position manager and we have to get the abi we got that abi as well now we have to simply import the erc20 abi and that's coming from our dot abi means in the same directory now we can simply come back here and let's do the internal import and let's import all of the function we have built in our utils in our context constants let's import that so let's say import we have to import the ERC20 ABI, then we have to import the token ABI, then we have to import this V3 swap router address, then we have to import this connecting contract, then we have to import this factory ABI, then we have to import this factory address, then we have to import this Web3 provider, position manager address, internal box contract, then we have the ICO contract, then we have the internal ad liquidity contract, and then we have the get balance and that's all coming from our constants. Hope oh, this is nothing complicated. Whatever we have built, that's all we are importing here. Now we can come back here. Let's import the parse ether and that's coming from our utils index. So that's all the imports we have done. Now we can simply build our context. So let's call this context. We'll say react create context. That's how we can build the context. Now we can simply export and build the context provider. So we'll say const context provider. In that we're going to simply pass the children. And now let's build that all variable. So we're going to take a variable called dab name. And you can literally call anything, but I'm going to call this liquidity dab. Now let's take a couple of state variable, which we're going to keep the track of the whether it's a token or maybe the states, that's all we're going to keep it and store it as a state variable. So let's call this const loader, set loader, and by default it will be false. So when the transaction will take place, we have to manage that state and we have to display the loader. Then we have to take a const, we'll say address, 
and we'll take this by default it's empty in that we're going to store the address then we'll take another chain id by default empty and now let's set for the token information so we can come back here let's call this cons balance set balance is going to be empty then we have to take the native token set native token empty and this is going to be an object then we have to take another one called token holders token set token holders it's going to be an array type because it's going to have all the addresses then we want to take a token cell set token cell and in that we're going to store that then we have to take another one current holder set current holder to be empty now we can come back here let's the notification so it's going to have two success or failure and we are using the toaster library so i can say cons notify error it's going to take a callback function so we'll pass the message and it's going to display so we'll take this toaster dot error and in that we have to pass the message and duration so how long we want to display the toaster so we'll pass the message and duration is going to be let's say four seconds the same thing we have to do for the success as well but we have to change the method so it's going to take toaster dot success and we have to pass the exactly the same thing so this is the notification component we have all we have to do is to simply call this particular function inside our component in the functions and it will display the message now we can come back here let's call this connect wallet connect wallet so now let's build this particular function so we'll take this connect is going to be an async and we're going to take this try and catch first thing we have to check for a ethereum object in the window so if user have metamask already installed in their in their browser so it's going to have an ethereum object if it's not there then we have to throw an error message so we'll say window.ethereum is not there then we have to simply call our notify error and we have to simply pass the message install metamask means the metamask is not there if there is no ethereum object because this metamask will inject the ethereum object in the browser else if it's there then we can simply take the address so this address will come in the form of array because in the metamask user can have multiple address but we have to get the very first address which user have connected so we'll take this away to window.ethereum request and we have to call this particular method because it has two method one it will initialize the connect wallet function whenever the user will open your application and one initialize based on the click event so we're going to simply call this method it request account we're going to build this condition we'll say if account dot length exist then we have to simply set this as an account address and we have to take the very first account else we can simply display the error message sorry you have no account and close this one and we have to take this provider new ether dot provider dot window and in that we can simply pass this window dot ethereum it's going to give us the provider and we can get the chain id from there so we can say provider dot get network and we have to simply set the chain id to the steady variable so network dot chain id and we have to simply close that one and if anything goes wrong we can simply take a variable call error message and we can simply call the internal function we have built called parse message in that we can pass the entire error object it's going to give us the response and that response we have to simply display in our notify error component and we can simply also console log out so to see what exactly went wrong so this is the very first function for connect now we can come back here let's build the second function called check if wallet connected so the function we have built it will trigger on the click event and this particular function we're going to build is going to check whether the user is connected or not so we'll say if check if wallet connected so it's going to have the similar structure so let's call this check if wallet connected is going to be an async and again we have to check for condition we'll say account wait dot ethereum request and we have to simply call the method get account once we have the account we can simply return that account the very first account got it so all we have to do is to simply call this particular function and it's going to return the first account which user have connected and this function we're going to utilize internally so these are the two functions we are done now we can come back here let's build this load token and this particular function is going to load the information about the token which the user wants to create liquidity so we'll say await async in that we have to simply pass the address remember 
we have to simply pass the address of the token and we'll take this try and catch we'll build the token details and we have to simply call the contract we have built so this is the call contract connecting contract in that we have to pass the token address and it will return all the information about the token and that's what exactly we have to return from this function and we have to simply catch an error if anything goes wrong so same thing console load and close that one so this is our load token function we have because we have already abstracted our bigger function into a small utility function and all you have to do is to simply call this function and pass the address and it's going to give the information about that particular token this is the load token now we can come back here let's build this get pool address and this one is very important function because if you want to allow user to create liquidity first you have to check the pool is exist on the network or not if it exists then we can allow the user to add liquidity on the existing pool again that's the important things you have to keep in mind we are allowing user to create liquidity on the existing pool let's build that particular function we'll say cons get pool address in that we have to simply pass the token one token two and the fee so when you pass this is going to return the pool address so we'll take this try and catch we can take this set loader to true then we can simply build the provider and we already built this particular internal function called web3 provider it's going to return the provider once we have the provider now we can build this particular factory contract we already have that one so we'll take this new ether contract we can pass the we can pass the abi and we can pass the address which we have already imported so what we are passing we are passing the factory address abi and the provider and it's going to give the entire object of the contract factory contract which is deployed on the network once we have the factory contract now we can simply extract the data from there so we'll call it pool address and that we can say await factory contract call function get pool address all we have to do is to pass the token address one token address two and token fee and we have to convert into a number i remember when we are passing this particular information the token one and token b it will come in the form of object because that's what we're going to get from the load token it will have the entire object and that's what we are simply getting here token dot address token to address and fee so that's what we have so this way we'll have the pool address and once we have the pool address we can take this pool history and we're going to store this information in our local storage in the user local storage because user can search for multiple pools and create different liquidity in different pools so we have to keep that information in the local storage so we can display to the user that these are the your these are the, your search and these are the pool exist on which you have created liquidity previously or you have search so you can pick any one as a different purpose so we'll say pool history we'll take this token one then we can take this token two and this token one token two will have the entire object and we can take the fee we can take the network which is coming from token one dot chain id whether you go with token two because it has the same chain id because we are allowing user to do the liquidity create the liquidity in the same network not in different network so the chain id would be same and we can take the pool address and close this one so once we have this data we can do simply we can store this in the local system so let's build that we can take this zero address i've taken this zero address as a variable because sometimes what happened that the pool doesn't exist on the network so this particular contract factory is going to return zero address so we have to tackle that as well whenever we get a zero address we don't want to store that in our local system so here we're going to build a condition so we'll say if pool address is equal to zero address then we can simply then we can display this message cat sorry there is no pool else we can take this let pool as a form of array then we can take a variable called pool list and we'll say local storage dot get items pool history that's the key pair i have assigned and this is what it's going to be stored as a key pair so first thing i have to get an existing like all the information from the local storage in this pool history so we'll say if pool history means there is a list 
then we can take this array and we have to justify pass local storage get pool history we have to get that once we have that we can take this pool array push and we have to simply push our in pool history array once we push that then we can simply store back to the local storage the entire data else else we can simply store it this time we're not going to check that whether is there is a already pool stored in the local storage or not all we have to do is we have to simply push into array and store we can push it and then we can simply store it local dot set item same name and we have to simply store it and close this one and that's the simple thing we have done and we can simply set loader false and we have can define this notification success we'll say successfully completed and we can simply close this one i hope you guys have understood that what exactly we have done here it's pretty straightforward and at the end we have to simply return the pool address close this one and we have to catch an error if anything goes wrong so we'll build the error object and we can simply pass down to our component so we have to turn off the loader state and we have to set this to the notification so that's our get pool address function we have pretty simple not that complicated now let's move ahead now we can come here let's build the create liquidity and here we allow user to create liquidity so first thing we're going to build our internal function so we'll say async function get pool data so before we start creating liquidity we have to get the information about the existing pool which we're going to use it for creating the liquidity so we need the pool contract which we have to pass into this particular function and in that we can take this tick spacing fee liquidity slot zero there's a multiple set of data you will have but we are going with this four await and i'm going to call this promise.all in that we have to simply pass the pool contract tick spacing because this pool contract will have all of this function so we have to say pool contract dot fee then we have the liquidity then we have the slot and this particular order is very important you have to maintain this order and that's what we're going to simply return now we can come back here and we can simply return the entire information so we'll take this tick spacing is going to be tick spacing then we have this fee then we have this liquidity then we have this square price six and that's coming from slot zero index then we have to take the tick which is in the first slot and that's what we have to receive and that's our internal function for getting information about the pool data because these are the five data we only need to get the information and add more stuff now let's work on the next function called create liquidity it's going to be amazing in that we have to simply pass the pool liquidity amount liquidity amount and approve amount so these are the information we're going to pass it now we can come back here we'll take this try and catch if anything goes wrong and we'll say set loader to true then we have to take this address and it's coming from our check if wallet is connected because we have to identify that who actually interacting with our function because when you try to get the address of the user from the global state like from the state variable it's going to be undefined so it's always better that you should build an internal function which can give you the address and the information internally when the function is getting executed in that way you will have the accurate data of the user so let's call this particular function and it's going to give the address of the user now we can come back here let's build a variable for provider we already have the web3 provider now we can come back here let's build the so provider dot get once we have that now we can build the token one object so we already have this token method which we are getting from uniswap vt periphery all we have to do is to simply pass the relevant information so let's come back here let's take this token and we have to pass the pool dot token a chain id then we have to simply pass the token a address then we have to pass the token a decimal point then we have to pass the token a symbol 
then we have to pass the name so these are the information like all the information about the token a token b and v that's all available in this pool because it will have an object of information so that's the very first token we have now we have to do the exactly for the second token so this will call second and we already have all of this data so pool token b and just get the same data we have to get like address decimal point symbol then we have the name so we got the instant of both the token now we can come back here let's build a pool address get the pool address which is also available in the pool object so we'll get the very first one now we can come back here we'll build the non fungible position manager and we have to interact with the contract so we'll call this new ether dot contract and we have to pass the address position manager address then we have to pass the abi non fungible position manager abi and we have to pass the provider so this will give the instant of the contract of non fungible position manager once we have that now we can come back here click a variable called pool contract and we'll call this new ether contract and we have to get the contract so we'll pass the pool address we'll pass the abi of uniso v3 pool and we have to pass the provider so this will give us the pool contract as well so once we have the non fungible position manager contract and the pool contract now we can come back here and we can build a variable called pool data and we already build a particular function above we'll call it get pool data all we have to do is to simply pass the pool contract and it will give the information about the pool once we have the pool data now we can come back here we'll take a variable called token 1 token 2 pool so we have to build that pool with the relevant data so we're going to simply call this new pool and this method is also available on uniswap all we have to do is to simply pass this relevant information we have to pass the token 1 the object we have created we have to pass the token 2 and we have to pass the pool data fee and we have to pass the pool data square 696 and we call this string then we have the pool data liquidity to string then we have the pool data tick and this will generate the pool between these token including the fee because we are creating liquidity on the existing pool so it will have the same fee range now we can come back here we'll build a, another variable called position we'll say new position and it going to take an object so first thing we have to pass is the pool the two token pools we have created including the fee all of this information then we have to pass the liquidity which is already there we'll say pass unit liquidity amount is going to be an eating so the amount will pass for creating the liquidity then we'll pass the tick lower and in that we can usable tick in that we can pass the pool tick pool data tick spacing we have to minus it with the pool data tick spacing and we have to multiply with 2 so i'm going with the equal range i'm not going with the higher or lower but you can go and you can do experiment with this variable but for being on the safer side it's better that you have to go with the equal range that's why i'm going with this two but you can play with this number then we have to go with the nearest usable tick we'll say pool tick pool data spacing and we have to simply go with the plus one in that we'll say pool data tick spacing multiply by 2 and that's the only thing we have to pass in the new position manager so looks good now we can come back here let's build a variable call approve amount and this amount is already coming from there we'll take this ether utils parse unit approve amount and we have to convert it into eating decimal points and it's going to be an a 2 string and it to a string so once we'll have the approve amount then we can build the token con track 1 so we need to get the both the contract token one contract token two contract and that's pretty easy so we'll say new ether contract and in that we can pass the address of the first token then we have to pass the abi which we already have then we have to pass the provider so this will give the first token contract and we have to get the second token we have to do the exactly the same thing 
but before we do that we have to simply make it call token contract zero and we have to simply connect with the signer so the one who is going to interact in my case when i'm doing this transaction so i will become the signer and that's what i'm trying to connect here so once we connect with the signer i will then simply approve in that approve i have to simply pass the position manager address and approve amount so in that way what will happen that i'm approving my uniswap position manager contract to take the token from me and they can spend on behalf of me and set as a liquidity on the chain so that's for the very first token now we have to do the same thing for the second token as well exactly the same thing i have to do so let's pass the address of the token b then i have to pass the abi so i can use the same abi i can get the provider and now i have to simply approve so we'll say await token contract one i'll call this connect signature and on that i can simply call the approve and let's approve the uniswap position manager to spend our token on behalf of us so that's what we have done now we can come back here let's let's take a variable and that i'm going to take it amount zero amount zero desire and this one is for amount two and this information is coming from position mint amount this is the method we have available and this is for the slippage but i'm not going to go with that now we can come back here now let's take a variable called params and in that we have to define all the data the final data for creating our liquidity so let's define that so first thing we're going to define our token zero means address then we have to define the token two address then we have to define the fee which is available in the pool data fee then we have to take the tick lower price and in that we can use this nearest usable tick we'll go with pool data tick and pool data tick spacing and we have to follow the same formula which we have followed on top so i'll go with minus and here i can simply take this pool data tick spacing multiply by two then the same thing we have to do with the upper tick all we have to do is to go with the plus one so let me do it very quickly tick spacing plus pool data tick spacing multiply by two so we are going with the lowest and to the highest two once we have that now we can come back here we'll take the amount and we already have this convert it to a string then we have to do the with the one convert it to a string once we're done with that now we can simply come back here and we'll take the amount mint it's going to be amount zero and this one is the one for one Again, if you want to learn about this in detail, you can check the documentation or I already explained multiple times because this is a structure we have followed in most of the project with different variables. So you can simply check that. But this is what we have in the documentation and we are just following the documentation. But I have customized it as for your easy understanding. Then we can take the recipient is going to be the address, the one who's connected. Then we can take the deadline and I will go over this particular one like for the 60 that looks good so that's the entire params we have which we're going to pass it during the function call now we can come back here we'll take a variable called transaction hash we'll take this non-fungible position manager contract and in that we can take this connect we have to connect with the signer once I connect it with the signer then I can take this mint in that we can simply pass the entire params and I'm going to define a gas fee for being on the safer side because there is a lot of data we have so we'll go with this gas side in hexi gas limit then i'm going to call this then because it's going to give us the response and we have to simply resolve that one so we'll take this response dot hash if the transaction is successful it's going to return the hash now we have to simply build the condition so we'll say if transaction is there means we got a successful transaction hash then we have to simply store that so we'll take a variable called liquidity contract and we already build that liquidity contract internal add liquidity and we can simply store this information into the contract so we can call this const add liquidity data we have the function called liquidity contract in that we can say connect signer and we're going to simply call the function so this is the function we have add liquidity and we can pass all the information so first thing is going to be the 
token A name. Order is very important. Make sure this is the order we have followed in our token contract, a liquidity contract, and that's the order we are passing the data. Then we have to pass the B name, token B. Then we have to pass the address A. Then we have to pass the address B. Then we have to pass the pool address. Then we have to pass the token B chain ID, token B or A, it has the same chain ID. Then we have to pass the transaction hash. And these are the information we are passing to our liquidity contract. Once we're done with that, we have to wait for the transaction to be completed. Then we can simply set the loader to false. We can display the notification success to liquidity added successfully. And we can simply reload the window and we can simply catch an error if anything goes wrong so we can take a variable called error message parse we'll pass the error object and we can simply set this loader to false and we can display this error message and that's the entire function we have written for create liquidity hope you guys have understood that how things are coming together now we can move ahead and let's write the native token functionality because we have our native contract. We have to get the information from our native contract, like from our token contract and from our ICO token cell contract. So we can come back here. Let's build this const fetch initial data, async, let's take and try and catch. Let's call get user account. So we'll take this address and we have this internal function, which we're going to call it. It will give us the address. Then we have to get the user balance and we'll say balance await get balance. This is the function we have already built. Then we can take this balance and set to our state variable in formatted data. So we'll format that in ether. Then we can take this set address and we can simply set the account to our state variable. And this particular function will call when the user will open our application. Then we can come here, we'll call this Mux token. So now we have to get the information of our native token. So let's get the contract first. We already have the contract internal function. We have the contract object and then we have to simply call that. So first thing we have to get the token balance. I'll take a let variable. Then here I can build a small condition. We'll say if account exists, then we have to simply call this token balance and we have to get the balance of the user like Wix contract and in that we have this particular column balance of and that we can pass the account so it will give that how much fund user have about our Wix token and we can set that else we can simply set it to zero to zero so in that way we will not have an issue if the user is not connected now we can come back here now we can take a variable called token name and we have to get all of this information so token name then we have to get token symbol then we have to get the token total supply then we have to get the token standard this is the additional data site we have built then we can take the token holders we'll have the user id this will keep the number that how many token holders we have. Then we have the token owner of contract and owner. That's what we have. Now we can get the token address. This is what we have. So we have all of this data. Now what we can do is come back here. Let's take a variable called native token and let's pass that data as an object. So this one is going to be first token address. Then we're going to take token name. Then we'll take this token symbol. Then we'll take this token owner of contract. Then we'll take this token standard. Then we'll take this token total supply. And we have to convert it into ether. Then we have to take the token balance which user already have then we have to take the token holders and this is the idea and we have to convert it into a number 
and then we have to simply close it. So this is the entire data we're going to set it in our state variable. So let's set that. So we'll call it this set native token and we'll pass this native token. So this all information about our native token will be available in our state and we can simply display now for it. So that's the native token. Now we can come back here and let's interact with the token holders. So we'll take this variable called get token holders. We have a function already. We'll say token contract on that. We're going to call the function called get token holders. And we have to simply set because this token holders will come in the form of array. And that's what we can set in our state variable. Now we got all the information about the token holders. Now we can come here call getting token holders data. So now we have to get all the information about the token holders, including the ID addresses, how many tokens they have. And we already have the function for that. So here I'm going to use this different methods. We'll say if account exists, then we can call this particular function. We'll say get token holder data. In that I can say await Wix contract. We'll say get token holder data. And in that we can simply pass the account. And it's going to return the entire information about the user who connected with our application. And we can take this call this current token holder and we have to simply set this data as an object. So let's set that. So we'll say token ID and this information is already here. Get token holder data. We'll say number first this, because this will come in the form of error. So we have to access in the indexing form. We have the token ID. Then we have to have the form get token holder data one. Then we have to get the two. Then we have to get the total token. We have to convert it into ether. Then we have to get the, let's say what information we have. We have to get the token holder. And these are the information we are taking and returning. So that's the only thing we have to go. Once we have the data, we can simply set this data to our state variable. We'll say set current holder to be a current holder and close this one. So that's the entire F block we have where we are checking information of the user. Now we can come back here. Now let's interact with the token cell contract. We have done with the token contract and all the information. Now we have to work on the token cell contract. So let's call this ICO works token contract and we already have the function internal ICO contract. Once we have the contract object, we can simply call this token price. What is the price of the token? We have to get that as well. Then we have to get the token sold. How many tokens have sold so far? That's what we have to get. And we have to also get the token sale balance that how many tokens are left in the token sale contract for sale, which we can easily able to access from here, like balance off. In that we can simply pass the pass the address of the token sale contract. So this time we are calling the works token contract. We are not calling the IC contract because if I want to check the balance of the available token of the token sold contract, then I have to call the token contract, not the ICO token contract. And most of you get this confusion. So this is the token sell contract address, which we are passing in the Wix token contract and it will return the balance of the token sell contract. Now, once we have all of this data, I can simply create a token sell object, which is going to keep all this information. So I want to keep the token price to be converted into ether. Then I have to convert the token sold. Then I have to get the balance convert into a ether. And these are the three information we want to take it from this. Now I'm going to simply set this data to our state variable. We'll call it set token cell to be token cell. Now we're going to simply console log out the entire token cell object. And let's console log out the native token and simply catch an error if anything goes wrong. So that's looks good. And that's the entire function we have for fetch initial data. So this function is very important where we are fetching all the information about the token. And now we can simply call this particular function. We'll take this use effect and let's call this one. So we'll say fetch initial data and it's going to be an empty array. So whenever the page will load, we have to simply call it. That looks fine. Now we can come back here. Let's build another function. So this time we'll call it buy token. So this particular function will be used by the user who wants to buy our native token. So we're going to say async 
and in that we have to pass the number of token user wants to purchase so it will say try and catch set token true cons we have to get the provider which we can get from here then we have to get signer then we have to get the contract so we have to call the ICO contract and we can simply console logout to see our contract object now we can come back here and here we're going to build the price so we'll take this this is the price we have set for the token you can get this price from the contract but I know this is the price so that's why I'm going with this hard code value because there is no function we have in our contract which will change the price you can add that function but I'll go with this one and I'm going to simply multiply with the number of token user wants to purchase so in that way we'll get the actual amount which user want to spend for buying the number of token we have the price now I can take this amount and I'm going to convert into a ether so we'll pass this to a string ether now I'm going to simply build the buying await contract dot connect and we'll call this buy token we have this particular function in that we can simply pass the token and we have to pass the value the amount and we have to set the gas limit to be this one lakh and that's our buy function now we can simply come back here we'll say away dot buying dot wait and we have to wait for the transaction to be completed now we have to reload the window once the transaction is completed now we can simply catch an error if anything goes wrong during the buying process so we'll say error we have to pass the error object and we have to simply display in the front end or we can simply do this, this one set loader to false and none notification error to be the error message and close this one and that's the entire buying function of token now we can come back here and let's work on the native token transfer because once we deploy all the contract the admin of the contract has to transfer the token from his account to the token sell contract in the ICO contract then the user can come and purchase so let's build the function for him it's going to be internal function only admin of the contract can call this particular function not anyone so we'll take this transfer native token and I will go with the hard code value because this will be done anytime so the owner of the DAP can simply change and he can transfer so let's take a try and catch I can take this set loader to true I can take this provider which is coming from here once we have the provider I can take signer once I have the signer I can take this cons token sell address so this is the token sell contract address where I want to transfer the token so this is the token sell contract address then I have to take the amount of token I want to transfer so I will go with 2000 this much token I want to transfer and I can simply build the token contract amount convert it to a string once we have that now I can build the transfer amount so we'll take this ether utils parse token once we have that one now I can come back here and let's build the contract so we already have the contract I can go into call this one wix token contract once I have the contract token object now I can build the transaction so we'll take this contract connect with signer that I'm going to call the function we have transfer in that I can pass the token address and the amount and it's going to make the transaction so I have to wait for the transaction to be completed and once the transaction is completed I have to reload the page now I can simply catch an error if anything goes wrong message dot sender we have to simply turn off the loader and now we can simply display the notification error message and that's the native function we have for transferring the token to token sell contract now build the liquidity history so we have to get all the liquidity from the contract which we can display in the front end so let's build that so we'll say get all liquidity and we have to simply call the function so we'll say try and catch we'll say get user account and which we can get from the internal function check if wallet is connected now once we have that we have to get the liquidity contract internal add liquidity once we have that let's say liquidity history we can simply call this contract dot get all address and that we can pass the account 
now we can come back here we'll say all liquidity liquidity history dot mapping and we have to simply map in perfect order so we can display in the front end so we'll say liquidity array and it will be an object type so we'll take the id convert it to a number then we'll take a network then we have to take the owner then we have to take the pool address then we have to take the token a then we have to take token b then we have to take the token a address and we have to take the token b address then we have to take the time when the transaction was created convert into a number and at the end we have to take the transaction hash which is already there in the contract and close that one so these are the information we are simply formatting and passing as a form of array now we can simply return that entire array from this particular function in the front end now looks good now we can come back here let's return the entire liquidity array and we have to catch if anything goes wrong so console log of the entire error object and that looks good now we can come back here and let's return the context all the function we have built so let's call this context provider in that we have to pass the value and it's going to be an object type and we have to build and pass down all the function we have created and variables so let's start with the function so we'll pass this connect then we'll pass this get pool address then we'll pass this like load token notify error notify success created liquidity get all liquidity transfer native token buy token token sell native token address loader dav name and these are the information we are passing then we have to simply set the children so close this one set the children and we have to close our context provider and close it down and that's all we have to write here in the context you can see we have written so many things everything looks absolutely perfect we have all of this import then we have the unisop import we have the internal import this is the constant this is the utility import we have this is the context the state variables the token balance state variable notification this is the connect wallet function we have this is the check and here we are getting the network and notification error close this one and here we have the check if wallet is connected which will return the address close this one and we have the load token all we have to do to pass the token address and it will return the entire information this is the get pool address we are passing this information getting the factory and getting all the relevant information and storing in our local environment in the local storage with this one all these messages and here we have the array for storing and success so this looks good get pool then we have this get liquidity data so this is a small function then we have this create and this one is the huge one we are getting all of this information getting the object of the tokens getting the non fungible pool contract pool data and we have this position manager we have the approval this is the price range liquidity this is the approval amount contract 1 contract 2 for the token and here we have this entire params for making the liquidity including the timing and deadline and here we are making the transaction once the transaction is completed we are simply calling our internal add liquidity contract and storing all of this information that's a huge one so this is the huge function now we have this fetch initial data so we are getting some basic information about token and the ICU and we are setting in our state variable so this is the token native token then we have this get holder then we have the token cell and we are simply current holders all the information about the token then we have this token cell so this is the address of our token cell contract and we are calling this particular token contract not token cell contract so that's the thing you have to keep in mind and here we have the token cell and looks good so let's close this one 
now we have calling this function now we have this buy one so user can simply pass the number of token he wants to purchase and we have all of this buy token look fine now we have this transfer native token so this function can only call by the admin of the contract because when the contract will launch when the, he will launch the token he has to transfer the token to the token sole contract and that's information we are providing here it's an internal function only called by the owner here we have to simply pass the address of the token sell contract because there we have to pass the token and we are passing 2000 and that's the simple one looks good close this one then we have this get all liquidity so all the liquidity created by a single user that's going to return from this particular contract and display in the front end we're getting the address passing here and getting all this information and here we are simply exporting all the function and the data the state variable and that's the only thing we have to do here looks pretty good now we can come back here now go to the all of this looks good we have done with the actually backbone of our application now we can come back to the app.js and here we have done all of the things and here we have to do the setup so here i have done this two setup so first thing we have to import our context provider which is coming from constants so if i come back here and you can see that here we have the provider so this is the provider that's what we are importing from here and we have this toaster which we're going to display and whenever any message available whether it's error or success so let's come back here let's wrap this context provider so copy close and close this one and now we have to display our toaster so we'll display this toaster this looks fine and that's the only setup we have to do for our context management let's test this out that are we facing any error so let's start the application so i'll simply type npm run dev and it will start the application on local is 3000 and here you can see no issue we have whatever we have built so far everything is working absolutely fine so i hope you guys are on the same stage where i am right now how things are coming we have built all the functionality it looks absolutely incredible now all we have to do is to simply work on the front end and simply connect all the function we have built so we have this contract liquidity we have the token all of the things we have built this is the app chairs. this is what we have coded and we have built this utility we have built this script and we have also seen how we can use remix id for deploying we have done too many things now this is what we're going to work next